Hey there. Before we start the tutorial, I just want to point out something. This tutorial is being done using Hammer++, a third-party, improved version of Valve's original Hammer user base for source mapping. If you're still using Hammer, you should just swap over to Hammer++, as it adds really handy new features for source mapping. Anyways, on with the tutorial, and good luck. Boot it up, and you'd see this. Select a game configuration you want to use. Since I'm making this for Gary's mod, I'm making this with the Half-Life 2 preset, since they're pretty much the same game. Hammer++ shows up. Now, a lot of things I say here can probably apply straight back to uh, base uh, Source Hammer, not just Hammer++. So, you can probably do... If you have any idea of how Hammer works, you can probably do a bit of a... Uh, you can probably do a process of elimination to guess what I'm doing that you can probably do in your map too. Now I'm going to create new. Now this is going to take a second. All right. Oh yeah, another thing that Hammer++ Plus Plus has that uh, you don't see in base Hammer is you can actually view 3D skybox, or just the skybox rather. Now I'm not going to go through the whole process of uh, showing you how to like change the skybox and or make your own since this is just getting started basically. Now you see this right here? This is the origin of your map. This is the center bit where basically uh, this is the zero ground of your map. If you want something to be directly in the center you'd put it there. Now whenever I make maps what I like doing is I like using the uh, dev textures, which is basically, uh, if I remember correctly, there's one in here that's like uh, the it's like a grid that I really like to use. Uh. I can't seem to find it. So I found the texture. It's called like Dev Measure Generic. This is a really good texture to use if you don't know what texture you're going to use for anything yet. This paired with the gray red texture you see here. These two uh, are really good. Usually whenever I'm making maps I would usually use the gray red texture here for like flooring and this for walls. Now to get a rough idea of where you are in the map, this blue line represents the y-axis, this is the x-axis. Now, uh, here's your cent here's the center of your map, so if you were to put this here, you would see that it appears right here on the uh, gizmo. Using, and I'm going to assume that anybody who's watching this has either never used Hammer before or wants to refresh on how to use Hammer. So you would use the bracket keys to change your grid size, but this is a bit of a dangerous move to do. Because it's basically, if you're using too many grid sizes, odds are you might accidentally leak the map. And by that I mean, there's going to be like a crack in the map that shows like between the skybox outside the map. Like, even though there's a sky texture here, the sky... This map is not actually boxed in with a skybox yet. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're just we're we're just going to start out simple here with not something like too horribly big. And now, after you get done using your uh, block tool here, you press Enter to create the brush. Now, as you can see, it has the orange developer texture that we've picked because you don't have to like automatically assign a texture to this. Anyways, back on what I was saying earlier, you should always stick to one grid size um, and unless you're doing fine details because if you see in the bottom right here where it says uh, snap on grid, this is the grid size in hammer units. Let me just uh, fix this rule here. Right, right here. I did not mean to say real here English moment 
anyways, now that we've made this, as you can see, it's a bit boring. And honestly, if you were to spawn in a player here, you'd if you're trying to compile the map, you'd realize you can't play this map because there's one entity we're missing. You go up here to your enter enter entity tool, ugh, and then click somewhere in your map, and you'll see a, a little fellow pop up. That this this is info player start. He is the best friend of every hammer mapper because I mean just just look at him. He's he's wonderful. So now that you've made this small little square. What you should do is go up here to your texture browser and then go over to Skybox 2D. This is a very good way for if you're making a map and you're just beginning to make a Skybox. So, what you do is okay, here's a little lesson that I learned. You, you don't want to do something like this where it's like, okay, I'm going to basically go like this. And then, like like this, and then, I I I don't want to go like okay uh, friggin' tools make hollow, I don't know like fifteen. Because then a problem here emerges, and it will actually increase your compiling time. Viz leaves. Your visibility is basically heavily affected by this because it's also like, the player has a possible visibility line, where it's, if he's, like, up close to this wall, this wall and stuff around it would be in its possible visibility line. Notice something here? There's a bottom bit to the skybox. So what I would recommend doing is, instead of actually making your map look slightly more sloppy, is you actually uh, building a proper skybox, which I'm going to go ahead and do now. And I'm probably going to speed up this footage in post. Alright, and now that the skybox is finished, just quickly make sure that your skyboxes, you know, actually line up and are not making a giant, like, crack anywhere. And yeah, you've basically made your first ever map that can be properly compiled. Now, whenever you're finished, you want to hit Control S, and then it'd bring up this dialog here. And now, you just give your map a name, so I'm just going to use this as GM underscore, uh, tutorial map. Make sure that there's no spaces, like this. You'd want to use, like, underscores. And, I, I, I know that... In a lot of cases, whenever you're thinking of Hammer and you're thinking of the Source Engine, you're usually thinking of your maps go in, like, BSP format. This is actually a decompiled version of your map. To compile your map, you know, smack F9, and I'm going to go back here to Normal. And you'd see the Run Map dialog here, and assuming you have everything set up fine, I'm going to just disable HDR since we're not going to be needing that for right now. I have don't run the game after compiling here, and uh, wait for key press to, when done compiling, checked. Now, whenever you're, whenever you're actually finished making all this in your map, click OK. And here, the compile begins, and now, since there's like nothing in the map, compiling's already finished. You should... Uh, go and start new game, and if you did this correctly, if you go into sandbox, because if it has the GM underscore at the beginning, you would see it under the sandbox tab, just like how if you go into like uh, Half Life Two or Half Life, if it has like C one and like uh, C two, C three, C four, Half Life Two has like D two, uh, D D one, D three, and this has DM underscore. You would see this underscore. Uh, you would see this under GM, so we're going to go into GM underscore tutorial map. And now that we've loaded into our map, as you can see, everything is fine. We can run around, jump around, and you notice something. 
our skybox actually shows up. That's because if we go back into Hammer here, you can see that we put it in the skybox 2D here. And it doesn't just appear as this texture. It actually appears as the skybox because it's a basically a brush ent entity. Now, something with our map, you may notice. Uh, if, if, we, if we open up our spawn menu and we spawn in a few props, uh, you'll, you'll notice something. Our map has no lighting. So everything appears in a full bright uh, style, which is not ideal. Especially for uh, if you want to make a good looking map. You don't want your map to be completely full bright. And I'll be covering how you actually fix this in the next episode with a lighting tutorial. But yeah, thank you all for watching, and goodbye.